What happens to pump efficiency? A constant flow when you overhead a pump. We're seeing this issue lots of places. I've seen it in Chicago, I've seen it in Raleigh, I've seen it in LA, I've seen it all over the country. Because people are buying pumps and just thinking they can put a variable speed drive on it and fix all their problems. You cannot. You cannot do that. And this is where we're getting in trouble. So let's kind of get across to you what we're seeing here. Back to that same pump curve I had earlier, 800 GPM, 110 feet ahead. Great. No big deal. Let's assume it's a condenser water pump where I want constant flow of 800 GPM and or a hot water or chill water system with two-way valves at full load, which only happens 1% of the time, but it will happen. In other words, let's look at full flow in this application, either in a verbal flow system where you need 100% flow, which load profile says maybe 1% of the time, but I need 800 GPM. Let's just say I've got to have 800 GPM one way or the other, part of the time, all the time, I need 800 GPM. What happens if you've overheaded the pump? This is critical. We're seeing major engineering firms make this mistake. You cannot fix an overheaded pump with a verbal speed drive and get full flow. You cannot fix an overheaded pump with a verbal speed drive and get full flow and, and hold on to what you had. And it's going to vary by pump curves, but let's just give you an example. In this case, you told me the head was 110 feet, 800 GPM. I asked you a question, what happens if I need 800 GPM, my actual pump head is only 70 feet? In other words, you've overheaded a lot, I'd agree, overheaded a lot. But if you're at 70 feet only the requirement and you need that much flow, look at the blue line. Where is 70 feet ahead going to be? Well, your verbal speed drive is going to slow you down to what? You're 100% speed at beep. But you don't need 110 feet ahead at full flow. Only need 70 feet. So the verbal speed drive starts slowing down. 90% speed, 80% speed. But what happens where that last green line, the last curve, which is 75% beat, by the way, what happens at that point if you get below 80% pump speed? If you get below 70 feet ahead, it falls off the pump curve. The pump dies. The pump cavitates. You're in trouble. You've just messed up. You've got a big problem. And we're seeing this all over the place. How do you fix it? How do you fix it? You've got to go throttle the pump discharge valve. You have to go throttle the pump discharge valve, add some head to it above 70 feet and get it back up on the pump curve. If you added 40 feet to it, you get it back to beat. But what does the energy code tell you to do? Not supposed to be throttling. And the owners are getting smarter. The owners are saying, how come my pump's throttle and there's a verbal speed drive on it? I am getting owners every day asking questions that don't know why, but they know that the code says that you should have a pump that hasn't been throttled. Minimize throttle losses is the way the code is written. Minimize throttling losses. So they put a verbal speed drive on there so they don't have to throttle anything, and the pump won't stay on the curve and cavitates. So you got to go back and add a balancing valve to make sure it stays on the pump curve. They recognize that as being wrong, and that's where the big issue is. We got to spend more time on this one because this is huge. So here's, a, here's where it falls off the curve, and you see the selection 800 GPM, 110 feet ahead. You kind of get the idea of, I hope you understand that a verbal speed drive will not fix this problem. If you, could, if you insist on overheading your pumps too much, if you insist on picking them to the right of beat, you do both of those things, a verbal speed drive is not going to fix it. You're going to have to throttle that pump, get it back up on the curve, and you just broke the law. You just broke the energy code if you want to get right down to it.